Welcome to Runegistics. I make fast guides here designed to help you accomplish an old school runescape goal or task as quickly and efficiently as possible. Okay, so Guardians of the Rift. We're gonna cover requirements, getting their objectives, suggested inventory, mechanics, and rewards. I only talk through my normal script for mini games, but uh, Guardians of the Rift gets a special paragraph. So listen guys, a few things here. People think this mini game is difficult to pick up. It's not. It's difficult to master, but understanding 90-ish percent of it is very simple. Guardians of the Rift is just a tower defense game that's super cyclical, and it has a lot of RNG sprinkled into it, and that's it. Also, just to get this out of the way now, until the way the minigame works changes, it's not very solo friendly. The way the RNG works, especially early on, can oftentimes cause created guardians to be way too weak, which causes the minigame to prematurely end. Because of this, I'm gonna focus solely on group play in the designated worlds. If in the future, Guardians of the Rift evolves into a more friendly solo minigame, I'll be sure to make a walkthrough for it. Until then, just enjoy it on one of the designated worlds, since it was designed to be played by a group anyway. And honestly, it's one of the more fun minigames out there. Now back to the regularly scheduled script. There's also a first time walkthrough as per usual at the end of this video where I'll detail exactly what to do to easily complete this minigame in a somewhat optimized and looped fashion that you can easily repeat. As a quick note, I would recommend people to do this on mobile, especially after you've gotten the mechanics and feel for the phases down, which you should realistically get after completing Guardians of the Rift two or three times. The only caveat to it is emptying your pouches on mobile can be kind of a pain. Feel free to utilize the chapters in the video timeline to navigate to whichever section of information you are interested in. Before attempting Guardians of the Rift, you'll need to have 27 rune crafting and completed the quest Temple of the Eye, which I have a guide for right here, and I'll include as a link in the description. Don't worry about the 27 rune crafting, you get it by completing Temple of the Eye. There's no other hard requirement here, though there are some useful pieces of equipment which we'll get into later. There's multiple ways of getting to the Temple of the Eye where the minigame is located. Personally, I just use the grouping teleport. It's super easy, always available. Obviously, there's a 30 minute cooldown, but I'm assuming you're not going to leave within the 30 minutes. If for some reason you left and you needed to get back, the portal for the temple is in the Wizard's Tower just south of Draenor Village, which you can use Fairy Rings, a Necklace of Passage, Amulet of Glory, whatever you're feeling. Okay, so this is the part everyone is confused about. Objectives and Mechanics. I'm going to break this down as simply as I possibly can. The objective of the minigame is as follows. Power up the Great Guardian to 100% using the Guardian Stones gained from mining, crafting, and runecrafting. To do this, you'll have to interact with quite a few different elements of this minigame. Along the way, you'll get elemental and catalytic energy, which determines the amount of times you can search the Reward Guardian right outside the minigame gate. So let's talk about how to do that. Okay, here's the map layout of Guardians of the Rift. Right outside the entrance is a bank chest with the Rewards Guardian and Apprentice Felix selling the overpriced rune crafting equipment. Inside the gate, you have the actual area where you play the minigame. Looks a little overwhelming at first, I know, but remember when I said Guardians of the Rift has a few different elements? Let's look at it that way. Specifically, I would say there's only four elements on the entire map. And keep in mind, this is just how I think of it and how I kind of condense the information to make it easier to understand. So the four elements. We have the mining element, crafting element, rune crafting element, and the guardian itself. Let's work from the beginning here and knock out each of these elements step by step and what you'll need for each one. So as I said before, the objective of Guardians of the Rift is to power up the great guardian before the abyss creatures attack it and kill it. So how do you power it up? You give it guardian stones. Well, how do you get guardian stones? You runecraft guardian essence at a runecrafting altar. How do you get guardian essence? You craft it from the guardian fragments at the workbench, or you can mine it from the huge guardian remains. And where do you get guardian fragments? Which takes us to element number one. Where do you get guardian fragments? You mine them from a few different sources. Specifically, there are three different types of nodes you can mine from to get guardian fragments. Guardian parts, guardian remains, or large guardian remains. Guardian parts and remains are essentially the exact same thing and are found all along the main area of the map, outside of the altar circle. Large guardian remains are found in the alcove on the eastern side of the map, which requires 56 agility to access. The only difference between these three nodes is the amount of fragments you can get per tick. For parts and remains, it's one to three. For large remains, it's two to four. I'll tell you this right now. Don't worry about how many you need. If you worry about the number of fragments that you're gonna mine at the beginning, it's gonna throw off your timing, especially when it comes to the portals. Huge guardian remains can also be mined, which skip the fragments and give you straight essence, which is a really big time saver. However, these remains can only be accessed by entering a portal that spawns every two minutes throughout the mini game. If you have your chat box open or watch the in game HUD, you'll see where this portal is. That portal is always a priority. 
And that's it. That's the mining element. Element number two is the crafting element. Once you have your fragments, you need to craft them into Guardian Essence. You do this at the workbench. It's a one-to-one -one ratio of fragments to essence. As a reminder, mining huge Guardian remains by entering the portal spawn completely negates this element, so you directly mine essence from these nodes. It's a big time saver, so you should always prioritize the portal spawn. Your essence pouches are an amazing tool here, which can hold the Guardian Essence. Between your small, medium, large, and giant pouches, that's 30 essence you can have available in addition to your inventory. All of these pouches have room crafting level requirements, so just use however many you can. The other part to the crafting element are the essence piles near the entrance, which are used to craft Rift Guardians, the guys who walk around the altars killing the abyssal creatures. To make a Rift Guardian, you need a chisel and a charged cell. The strength of the Rift Guardians depends on what charged cell you have. I'll explain the charged cell thing more in the next section because it's a little bit technical to understand, but to keep it simple, there's four types, weak, medium, strong, and overpowered. Only 10 guardians can be active at any given time during the game, which is always shown on the in-game HUD. For this part of the crafting element, my advice honestly is this. While learning the minigame, don't worry about this. Only craft a guardian if there are less than 10 available and you have either a strong or overpowered cell available. In group worlds, there's almost always 10 guardians up, and in all honesty, I normally ignore this aspect of the minigame completely. If you have the chance, go for it. If not, don't stress it. Oh, and also, at the beginning of the game, you can craft a guardian by grabbing a weak cell off the table right next to the entrance. Just a disclaimer, this can be very problematic, because if your group crafts 10 weak guardians, they'll likely be killed off pretty fast. So please, just wait until you have a stronger cell. Number three, the rune crafting element. Okay, so you have your guardian essence and you're ready to rune craft. Let's walk through how this works because this is why people think this mini game is so confusing. The runic altars are broken up into two categories, elemental and catalytic. Elemental has air, water, earth, and fire. I mean, think Avatar The Last Airbender if you have to, but it's pretty straightforward. Catalytic has mind, body, cosmic chaos, nature, law, death, and blood. At any given time during the minigame, two of these altars are open for players to enter. One elemental, one catalytic. These altars change every 20 seconds on a random rotation. Depending on your rune crafting level, if you're targeting specific runes or targeting specific points, all you need to do is enter the altar and rune craft the essence you have. For every one essence, you get one guardian stone and the runes of that altar. On top of that, if you have an uncharged cell in your inventory, it will become charged with the energy of that altar which brings us to the types of charged cells. On the table to the right of the entrance, you can pick up zero to 10 uncharged cell, as well as one already charged weak cell. The uncharged cells can be charged at the rune crafting altar and used to either craft guardians, construct new barriers, or reinforce existing barriers. Each rune corresponds to a different level of charged cell. Air, mind, and body runes are considered weak. Water, cosmic, and chaos are medium. Earth, nature, and law are strong, and fire, death, and blood are overpowered. You can only have one charged cell in your inventory at any given time. Depending on what you have in the progress of your game at the time, use this cell however you can to increase your guardian's defenses and more importantly, get more points. This aspect is often ignored a lot by players when doing Guardians of the Rift because they all just want to runecraft essence and go straight and give the stones to the great guardian. But the cells can slowly add up a lot of points. The easiest way to explain this is by looking at the wiki table for points. You can craft a guardian, place a new barrier, strengthen an existing barrier, or reinforce one, all of which gives of a varying number of points. Early on in the designated Guardians of the Rift worlds, my advice would be to always use the cell to strengthen an existing barrier. It's fast, and most of the other elements are likely already being done by other players. As you get better, start looking to see if you can craft stronger overpowered Guardians, or check the barrier to see if there's one that you can strengthen from what it already is at. So the last notes on the runecrafting element are talismans and the deposit box. While runecrafting, you have a chance to loot a talisman corresponding to the altar you're at. This talisman can be used to later enter the altar regardless of if it's open or not. Depending on which talisman you get and if you want to return whenever you can, it's a nice to have. You can save it or drop it, it's your call. I honestly typically drop these unless I have one that corresponds to an overpowered altar. The deposit box is just that, a place where you can deposit runes and have more inventory space for more essence. I'll admit I'm very bad at depositing my runes of efficiently but over one full game, you can expect to process around 10 to 15 more guardian stones if you are depositing runes as you get them, so it's absolutely worth it. And lastly, we have number 4, the guardian element. This one is super simple. After getting the guardian stones, run them to the great guardian. This is how you get points and increase the guardian's power. If you ever have stones and try to enter an altar, the guardian will make you give them up before you can enter. And that's it. I know I say that's really it, but uh, there's a lot to take in here. It is a complex mini game, especially at first, but if you compartmentalize all the mechanics of Guardians of the Rift into different elements, 
I feel like it's a little bit easier to digest. You might notice I didn't include info about the abyssal creatures or any of the phases or timings. That's because when playing Guardians of the Rift on the designated world, these things don't really matter. I find it useless to include pieces of info you aren't going to need. There's already a lot going on here, so why make it a little bit more muddled? All timings and cadences will be covered in the walkthrough, so don't worry. If you're still unsure at this point, watch the walkthrough and try it yourself. I'm willing to bet some of it will slowly start to click. So a quick recap or a TLDR. Mine the fragments from the Guardian Remains, craft the essence at the table, or mine it from the huge remains by entering the portal. Runecraft your essence into Guardian Stones, feed your stones to the Great Guardian, and use your charged cells to create guardians or create reinforced barriers. So that's it, that's the mechanics. Now let's look at ways to make you faster and make this mini game easier. So helpful items to take advantage of, if you have them, include kind of vague, but your highest level pickaxe. This makes such a huge difference, I can't stress it enough. As you move up in mining seal and access stronger pickaxes, you'll slowly see more fragments coming your way. Any essence pouches you have and can use. You'll likely get these playing the minigame if you don't already have them. Unfortunately, they're locked until you have certain rune crafting levels. As you progress, always use whatever essence pouches you have the level for. Storing essences in these saves you a lot of time and increases your points per hour output immensely. Over time, they will degrade and it is a huge pain, but they can be repaired by the Dark Mage by either traveling to the Abyss, contacting him via the Lunar Spell NPC contact, or talking to Apprentice Cordelia located in the minigame, who will contact the mage and have them repaired for one Abyssal Pearl, which is the currency you can loot as a reward by playing this minigame. Personally, I actually use Apprentice Cordelia more than anything because it makes it so much easier. The Varrock Armor. Any of the variations of the Varrock Armor have a 10% chance to mine two ores at once. This is super helpful when mining the fragments and makes a pretty noticeable different. The requirements for Varrock Armor 1 via the Easy Diaries are really simple and I'd highly recommend knocking it out. Most of the other helpful equipment is obtained during the minigame as part of the rewards, which we'll cover in the next section. Aside from that, there's other optional equipment specifically for crafting combination rooms during this minigame. That is a whole nother can of worms, which I'll cover in an entirely separate video explaining the gear setup and walkthrough for combination runes. So if you're interested in that, make sure you know uh, Subway Sandwich to the channel and stay tuned. Rewards. Throughout the encounter, you gain elemental and catalytic energy based on the activities you do that determine the amount of times you can search from the reward guardian, which are called points. For every 100 energy, you get one point. You need one elemental point and one catalytic point to search the guardian one time. The energy is compounded, meaning if you get 150 elemental points during a game, you'll receive one point plus a 50% chance to get a second point, assuming you win the minigame. There's no threshold here. On average, I'd say a decent player with at least 50 runecrafting could net uh, six to eight points between the two types each game. There is a vast amount of rewards you can get from the reward guardian. All rewards are calculated based on your rune crafting level at the time you complete the minigame, and it is possible to stack your rewards in between games. I search the Guardian in between games. Every time you search the Guardian, you roll for your loot, which can include runes, talismans, essence pouches you might not already have, but the real beauty of this minigame are the unique and rare rewards, which you have a chance to loot. Here's the list of rare and unique rewards you can potentially get. Some highlights, the Abyssal Needle, which can combine all of your essence pouches into a colossal pouch, saving you three inventory spaces. The Abyssal Lantern, which when lit gives you some amazing perks when playing this minigame. Abyssal Pearls, which can be used to repair your essence pouches as I mentioned earlier, or purchase the runecrafting gear set from Felix outside the minigame, as well as other unique items for Guardians of the Rift. I won't dig super deep here guys, just know the rewards from this minigame were definitely well thought out and very nice to have. Alright, so let's walk through it together then. A safe, effective, and most importantly repeatable method to get seven to nine points for Guardians of the Rift. To complete this walkthrough, you'll need your best pickaxe equipped. Additionally, if you have your Varrock armor, put that on too. The only other thing you'll need are your essence pouches, however many you can use, and optionally, a chisel. The essence pouches help you out a lot, and the chisel is if you want to craft Guardians. Again, not necessary. All right, so quick breakdown because I want whoever watches this to actually absorb the information. You can just copy it, yes, and if you want to, that's totally fine. But it is very easy to follow this guide once and then do it yourself. A lot of people seem to not follow the idea of a cyclical nature that this minigame has. If you time what you're doing properly, you can loop your actions in such a way that you optimize your cell placements, portals, and fragments. And full disclaimer, making sure the catalytic and elemental points are close does not matter to me whatsoever. I just want a max number of points between the two. There's 11 steps total and you'll see the loop relatively quickly here, so let's do it. Once you manage to actually get into the minigame, grab 10 uncharged cells. Don't worry about the weak cell for now, it's not entirely necessary. 
Then start mining fragments. Depending on your agility level, mine the remains near the crafting table or go down and mine the large guardian remains. The goal here is to mine until a certain time before the altars open. Specifically, 25 seconds if you use the agility shortcut and 15 seconds if you didn't. No math, no X amount of inventory spaces, just mine until those time. Remember, the best way to do this minigame is proactively move based on the time, which creates a loop. Once there's 25 or 15 seconds left, run to the workbench and craft one inventory of essence. Don't fill your pouches here, because if you do, it'll throw off your timing for the first portal. You should finish crafting around the time the first altar's open. Run to whichever open altar you choose and enter it. Room Craft your essence and exit. Feed the guardian the stones and place your cell down on a barrier. Then enter the next open altar you want. And craft another charged cell and exit. Once you're out, place down your charged cell in a barrier. Likely around or a little before this time the first portal spawn has occurred. Go over to it and enter it. Mine a full inventory of essence including filling any pouches you have. Exit the portal once you're done. Then, go to the open altar you want and enter it. Runecraft your essence, including pouches, and exit. Feed the guardian the stones and place your cell down on a barrier. Then, run to the deposit box and deposit your runes. Right after that, craft a full inventory of essence plus pouches at the workbench. And now we've reached the loop, so we're going to go back to step 4. Once you're done, go to the open altar you want and enter it. Runecraft your essence, including the pouches, then exit. Feed the guardian the stones and place your cell down on a barrier. Then enter the next open altar you want, craft another charged cell, and exit. Once you're out, place down your charged cell in a barrier. Likely around or a little after this time, the second portal has now spawned. Go over to it and enter it. Mine a full inventory of essence, including filling any pouches you have. Exit the portal once you're done. Then go to the open altar you want and enter it. Runecraft your essence, including pouches, and exit. Feed the guardian the stones and place your cell down on a barrier. Then run to the deposit box and deposit your rune. Right after that, craft a full inventory of essence plus pouches at the workbench. Once done, go to the open altar you want and enter it. Runecraft your essence, including pouches, then exit. Feed the guardian the stones and place your cell down on a barrier. Then enter the next open altar you want, craft another charged cell, and exit. Once you're out, place your charged cell in a barrier. Likely around or a little after this time, the third portal has now spawned. Go over to it and enter it. Mine a full inventory of essence including filling any pouches you have. Exit the portal once you're done. Go to the open altar you want and enter it. Runecraft your essence, including pouches, and exit. Feed the guardian the stones and place your cell down on a barrier. Then run to the deposit box and deposit the runes. Right after that, craft a full inventory of essence plus pouches at the workbench. You might see at this point that you don't have enough fragments for a full inventory or have some left over. I mean, that's just the way she goes, man. You, you know, you live and learn. Once you're done, go to the open altar you want and enter it. Runecraft your essence, including your pouches, and then exit. Feed the guardian the stones and place your cell down on a barrier. Enter the next open altar you want craft another charged cell, and exit. Once you're out, place down your charged cell in a barrier. Around this time, the loop is kind of closing up and the game is basically over. You should have anywhere in the range of seven to nine points, depending on the RNG of how many high level cells you have and how lucky enough you were to get them. Man, that's just the RNG of the game to be honest. Obviously, depending on your rune crafting level, certain portals may not be available to you. On the account I did this walkthrough on, I don't have death or blood runes available. Obviously, the best way to deal with this is to just have a game here and there where you target certain runes to gather more catalytic points. And even more obviously, the more you play, the more altars you're slowly going to unlock anyway. So, if you are successful in completing Guardians of the Rift, congratulations. 
More importantly, if you now fully understand how Guardians of the Rift works, I commend you. This mini game has a learning curve and it's going to take some time for you to fully optimize and comprehend every aspect of it. But seriously, well done. You should be very proud because this game is not easy to pick up. And hey, no more grinding bloods for 12 hours a day if you don't want to. If you like this video, feel free to leave a like. I'll be putting out more mini game guides like this one and other guides around different areas of OSRS. And if you like this format and want to learn other areas, subscribe so you get notified. And as always, feel free to comment areas where you think it needs better explanation. I'm always happy to hear from you on ways to make this easier. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next one.